Sometime in the not-so-distant future, the dreams of millions will be realized. Its problems resolved, SN25 or some such will make its triumphant entry into the Martian atmosphere, execute its rather complex landing sequence, and set down on the surface of another planet. We will triumphantly set forth, and then what? I mean, the Martian environment has been pretty friendly to our robots. They've lasted longer than we thought. But the atmosphere is cold and ridiculously thin and completely poisonous to us. Not very pleasant, to say nothing of the dust storms that get kicked up from time to time. But okay, let's stick to the basics. How about food? Well, to start with, the Martian soil is completely sterile, not very good for growing and it's loaded with perchlorates, which are quite poisonous to us in the long run. So, how do we survive on a planet that is constantly trying to kill us? Welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. At the moment, I think we're going to talk a little bit about what happens when we arrive at Mars, as opposed to the constant developments in the construction and engineering and testing of the Starship. Everybody seems to be talking about that, but there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of concentration on what happens if our best dreams come true, if the starship is 100% successful and transports 100 eager colonists to Mars. What do we do at that point? Now, of course, there's a whole variety of challenges that they're going to face, environmental, radiation, but I'd like to focus on the basics, food and water. Now, fortunately, the water issue is not all that complicated. There's actually quite a lot of water on Mars, a tremendous amount, more than we ever imagined, really. So it's just a matter of finding a good place where there's a great deal of frozen water and then purifying it. It's not very complicated at all, actually, with today's technology. Food, however, that's another story. The soil, as I mentioned before, is completely sterile. Nothing really can grow in Martian soil as it is. And even with a lot of fertilizing, the Martian soil is still loaded with what's called perchlorates. Many of you know what that is, but nevertheless, to those of you who don't, let's just keep it simple. It isn't good. Things don't grow very well in it, and even if they did, Anything that you consumed that was loaded with perchlorates would eventually affect your health in a very, very negative way. So how do we get past that? I mean, the Martian environment is unfriendly enough as it is, and the soil is poison? Is this really the best place for us to go? Well, a lot of people say no, but there are many, many ways actually around this problem. Now granted, the Martian regolith is really toxic crap. I mean, aside from what I've already mentioned, the cosmic rays have created a variety of other extremely dangerous substances in the soil. This stuff is so poisonous that any earthbound bacteria that happens to be subjected to the perchlorates in it for any substantial amount of time tend to die off which is very good news for any bacteria that may be native to the planet, but it would be extremely difficult, for example, to rinse the soil, fertilize it with your own shit, all for the sake of producing a few potatoes. Funny, 
That sounds a little familiar. Oh, well, anyway. Elon Musk, coincidentally, has a younger brother named Kimball, and he has a solution to these issues, and he calls it stacked farming. It's not a new concept. Using hydroponics or aeroponics, essentially plants and agriculture without soil. And it can be quite productive. It can be grown underground using LED lighting. And as you can see, the plants can be very prolific. And you wouldn't be restricted to green leafy vegetables either. You could have strawberries, blueberries, a whole variety of things. But what about protein? Well, you'd be out of luck with most types of livestock. Chickens, for example, although small enough to bring on the trip, require gravity in order to swallow water, for example. Now, you could get around this without going totally vegan, but that depends on the feasibility of a certain concept. And that involves tethering two starships together and using the centripetal force to create artificial gravity. Now this is a bold concept that goes beyond the scope of this video, but what happens if that doesn't pan out? Well, before you vomit, there would be lots of options besides cockroaches, but that doesn't change the fact that the most likely form of edible protein that could survive an interplanetary journey would be insects. So there we are. Problem solved, right? Either hydroponics or aeroponics, Kimball Musk has the issue taken care of. So long as you're ready to be a vegan and uh, get your protein out of ground up bugs or something along those lines. Not too appetizing, but doable. But is there another way? There are drawbacks to hydroponics. For one thing, it's very reliant on electric power. After just a few hours, deprived of its electricity, the plants will start to dry up almost immediately. Of course, deprived of electric power, the entire colony would be in big trouble regardless. So, not too big of a drawback, but what about protein? Well, we've already talked about not being able to bring livestock, but what if we could? And what if we could integrate that into growing our plants? There is a better way. Once fertilized, fish eggs, such as tilapia, won't actually hatch until they reach a certain temperature. And they'll survive for at least as long as an interplanetary journey would take. And if you can have fish, you can have something called aquaponics. Here's how it works. The fish fertilize the water at the bottom of the tank. The water is then pumped up to the top of the tank where it fertilizes the plants. The plants remove the impurities and fresh water trickles back down to the fish. Now like hydroponics, this particular design can be stacked and even rotated row after row of produce, rotating through the fertilized water, making for a much more productive system and also extremely compact, as you can see here. Plus, you get fish out of the deal. And here's aquaponics taken to the next level, a combination solar power plant and greenhouse by a fellow named Valcro, 3D printed by the way. Surrounded by solar panels and featuring a solar collector at the top, natural lighting for the plants, and solar power for the colony together with a lot of other features such as water reservoirs for the plants and also for radiation protection for the workers. You could be looking at an innovation every bit as important to Mars colonization as the Starship, providing meat, produce, and power for a self-sustaining Martian colony. And so there you have it, aquaponics. Maybe it's not the perfect solution, but at least you have fish in addition to your veggies. Maybe even a sushi restaurant could open up one day. Who knows? At least it provides some options. And here's your hidden challenge, by the way. Are there other kinds of protein that we could bring to Mars? Somehow breed it there? 
I'm open to ideas. I don't know of anything else besides fish, but I'd be interested to hear if there are any other alternatives. For every idea that uh, gets put forth in the comments, I'll give you five more entries. And by the way, we are almost at the end of the giveaway challenge. We just have a few dozen subscribers left. So get those entries in there, go back to the previous videos, do the challenges, and stay angry about space.